Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to join you in this beautiful city of New Orleans. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our company. We originally started out as Farmers Telephone, excuse me, Pulaski Farmers, Merchants and Farmers Telephone Company, located in Pulaski, Wisconsin, back on March 10th of 1910. We've been in business for over 100 years. We have consolidated those 100 years into a very short video. And I'd like to show it to you now to give you some background on our organization. Cellcom is an innovative wireless company that provides nationwide service for its customer base throughout Wisconsin and Michigan. Cellcom is respected for its long-standing reputation of providing extraordinary customer care and for its renowned network customized to its rural markets. As a subsidiary of Ensite, Cellcom is part of a family of companies offering complete telecommunications services. For an entire century, Ensite has succeeded as a legendary player in the communications industry while never losing sight of how it all began. From its humble beginning in the small village of Pulaski, Wisconsin, to the exciting growth of today, Ensite's success is the result of the hard work and forward thinking of a company committed to making life better, inspiring progress and building not only a flourishing business, but flourishing communities. A company committed to the true heart of communication, people. 1910 was a time of tremendous growth in Pulaski. It was the year that the village was incorporated and a small group of progressive local business people founded the State Bank and Telephone Company. The Reardon's tenure in the company began in 1923 with Daniel and Florence Reardon. Both were very entrepreneurial in nature and they had heard there was an opportunity to get involved in Pulaski's Telephone Company. After purchasing controlling interest in the company, the next step was to establish a location. They needed a business office, a place to live, and the ability to have operators work overnight so the phones could be answered 24 hours a day. They found this building, which served as the telephone company headquarters and their residence. Robert E. was 24 hours a day Northeast Telephone. When I first started, he would come over to my place on a Sunday, pick me up, and we would go ride the lines where to look for broken poles to uh, see if any wire needed replacing or if there was an install, what needed to be done for the next day. Sometimes I missed the Packer game, but what are you going to do? I still remember uh, our dad telling me, he said, you're not in the telephone business. Uh, and that was kind of surprising because I really thought we were in the telephone business. And he said, he said, Dad, if we're not in the telephone business, what business are we in? He said, you're in the service business. He said, always put your customers first. It opened our eyes to saying, well, how can we service our customers better? And I remember Pat coming to a meeting and, and talking to us and saying, you know, we're going to get into this new business, this cellular telephone business, and I, I'm going to be busy with starting this up for a little bit. And it's going to take me a little bit of time, and, but don't worry. You know, we'll get that set up, and then things will be back to normal here at Northeast Telephone Company. It never really got back to normal. It just kept growing and expanding. And I had my salesperson come into me at my office, and he said, Pat, I just sold our 500 cell phone. And he looked at me and he said, so what do you want me to do now? He said, you really don't think Brown County can handle more than 500 cell phones, do you? And I looked, geez, I sure hope so. Go out and sell 501. Cellcom was the first carrier in the state of Wisconsin to turn up a rural cell site. Success in this geographic region led to expansion in adjoining counties and communities. Cellcom was on its way to becoming a leader in regional communications. The concept that, that uh, we've always used is to take what we have today and build on it for tomorrow. We learned a lot of lessons in the process, but that's one of the advantages of being an innovator. You find out how to do it right. So we always have to be constantly looking to the next thing, the next thing, and next thing. And we also have to constantly, constantly reinvent ourselves and reinvent our companies. And I think we've done a good job of that in the past, and, and we'll continue to do that in the future. It's the small things we do every day that makes this company special. Uh, we just don't like to lose a customer. We want to do everything we can to hold on to that customer. And 
we treat our customers with respect. And I think that's one of the enduring things that we have that we've kept through the, the 100 years of our existence and one of the main reasons why we're going to be in business for a long time to come. Thank you. I hope that gives you a feel of the company I represent. We're all very proud of what we do, and I think it comes through loud and clear. Today, I want to bring you up to date on what CTI wants to be and how it's preparing to face today's most critical industry challenges. Now, that always starts with the organization's vision statement. On February 7th of this year, the Executive Committee of CTIA approved the following vision statement. CTIA will be proactive in driving an industry and public policy environment that fosters innovation, productivity, sustainability, and security in the wireless industry for its members, consumers, and the wireless ecosystem. This will enable our nation to provide worldwide leadership in wireless technology and services, thereby improving the economy and the quality of life both here in the United States and around the world. To accomplish this, CTI will work with industry members, regulators, and legislators to ensure a healthy, efficient, and competitive wireless industry. Now, that's a lot to think about and digest in this vision statement, but there are four elements of the vision that I want to highlight for you today. Sustainability, security, innovation, and productivity. Last year, our chairman, Dan Hesse, made sustainability a very real goal for our industry through his leadership. CTIA promoted benchmarking for recycling handset devices effectively in 2011. Sustainability will be a continuing commitment and an ongoing key goal for CTIA. Last spring, I was awakened to the real concerns of cybersecurity when General Keith Alexander talked to us about how vulnerable we truly are to cyber attacks and the dire consequences of these attacks for our customers, member companies, our infrastructure, and our nation. We cannot delay on this and for that reason, CTI has addressed this issue as a priority. On March 12th of this year, John Marino became CTI's Vice President of Technology and Cybersecurity. John has already formed a members committee of some of the industry's top security experts. And we'll have a proposal to our board later today on how we can start to tackle this very complex issue. The key responsibilities John is in charge of include helping to secure wireless networks and devices against cybersecurity threats, educating our policymakers on emerging technologies, advocating for sensible and practical regulations, and serving as CTI's primary liaison with government agencies. CTI is dedicating staff and money to making our ecosystem, customers, and nations safer from cyber attacks. Now, greater innovation and productivity for our customers and nation will be unleashed when enough additional quality spectrum is made available in a fair and equitable manner to all carriers. This will lead to increased competition and will translate into increased jobs and higher quality of life here in America. That increase in quality of life will not stop at our borders, but will stimulate worldwide growth of economies. Now, it may seem like I'm overstating the case for what one industry can do. However, I would ask you 
to look back over the past five years and how this industry has changed the way people interact with each other, how the industry has changed the way we work, and even the way we learn and realize this is just the beginning. Look, I, we, I know that we as companies have our own vision of the future. As a matter of fact, we as individuals each have our own vision. I know I have a vision, and perhaps it's different from yours. I, I do love my Packers. We will always have conflicting goals from person to person and from company to company. But this is the essence of capitalism. It is what drives competition. We're all aware of how issues between the largest carriers and other carriers aren't always complementary. CTI is working on offering platforms to discuss these issues. We can't ignore them, but rather we must face them. All this being said, in order to accomplish our worthwhile industry vision, we need to unite for our common goals. If we're able to do this, the future for our customers, our members, and our nation is nothing short of breathtaking. Together, let's make it happen. Thank you. Well, I know that Coach McCarthy would be very disappointed if I didn't leave behind a little of the Green Bay Packers. So if you're ready, <laughs> I also need to pass on to you that Coach McCarthy does plan to revisit New Orleans next February. Have a great conference. Thank you.